Welcome to another episode of Snake Stalker. Today's episode, we're gonna be hunting down the, one of North America's most deadly snakes. The crocodiles, or pit vipers, or lipsids, or otherwise known as coral snakes. Look at over there! I think we got one! <laughs> Now, look at your dad, okay? Would you look at her? She's a beaut. Crikey, she's a looker. You can find out what kind of snake you have looking about identifying a few key visual traits. Come on, look at here. Right. That there's a pit viper, <laughs> yeah? Otherwise known as a rattlesnake, copperhead, cottonmouth, or water moccasin. These guys can be identified by having a large triangular head, thick bodies, some pits between the eyes and the nostrils, and some long fangs, and occasionally even got a rattle on their tail. But what you're lucky over there? Over here. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> Lucky us. Here we have a coral snake. These snakes are usually thin and brightly colored with red, yellow, and black bands down their bodies. This coloring on the coral snake ends up being very similar to that of its non venomous cousin, the king snake. To figure out the difference between the two, most of us use the old saying, red on black, friend of Jack, red on yellow, killer fellow. With all this said, however, if something happens to you out in the wild with a snake, don't waste too much time trying to identify it and specifically trying to figure out whether or not you think it's venomous. Heck. Don't even try to catch the sucker to bring it to the hospital. At most, if you can get a nice photo snapshot of it from a nice safe distance so you can identify the snake later, that's a great idea. But leave the catching to snakes to the professionals like me, the snake stalker. <laughs> well, would you look at that? Looks like I'm getting my ankles nibbled on right now by one of our little snake friends. Well, looks like we gotta deal with a snake bite problem now, eh? But before I do anything with this bite, let's talk about what we don't want to do. Use of pressure bandages, tourniquets, electric shock, ice retail snake bite kits, and cutting and sucking around the snake bite to get the venom out are all horrible ideas. All that's gonna do to me is cause unnecessary and pain and permanent damage to my ankle, which is otherwise probably might not happen with just the regular snake bite. So contrary to any popular belief or advertisement you might see, do not use any of these methods to treat snake bites. They're a waste of your time and money. What we are going to do for my little bite here, though, is first make sure our scene is safe. I don't want anyone or for me to get bitten again by that rascally snake. Second, I need to calm myself down. A faster heart rate and anxious behavior will only make the venom move faster throughout my body. Next, I'm going to remove any rings, bracelets, or other accessories that could cause a constriction problem if I have any problems with swelling later on down the road. After that, 
I'm going to bandage the wound left by the snake bite. Snake bites can appear as one, two, or even multiple puncture wounds in the skin. Just make sure you bandage all of it up. I wouldn't want to get an infection along with this. Nasty things infections. Now that I'm all bandaged up, I'm going to draw a progression outline around the wound to track any changes I might see in the skin and any swelling as time passes. Next, we're going to end up splinting my limb just so we can keep it from possibly moving as much as possible. Finally, we're going to keep my leg below my heart. This way, the blood's going to fight gravity to make it back up to my core. Now that I'm all taken care of, we need to figure out how we're going to get out of here. Because I ultimately need to get transported to a physician or a hospital as safely and quickly as possible. So that I can get treated with some nice anti-venom. So depending on where we are, If we're within a close range to civilization, then it's recommended that we use the local SAR team or medical helicopter to evacuate me out of here. But if we're days out from any urban area, then I can start slowly walking my way out or to a place where our chopper can come get me. We just gotta make sure to not increase my heart rate too much or the venom is going to get to my heart faster. So off we go. Most snake bites to humans and even pets are total accidents. Like you step on it or randomly come across it. Other times people are bitten because they provoke the snake to attack. By either trying to handle the snake, throwing little rocks at it, trying to poke it with a stick. Remember, no snake ever intentionally tries to go out and bite someone. I'll cut you. Okay, most snakes don't. But the lesson here is that we can prevent snake bites to us and others by watching our step, never reaching into concealed areas, shaking out sleeping bags and clothes before we use them, and making sure we keep our pets from wandering off and exploring areas that are hidden and covered. Well, that's gonna do it for me here today. Tune in next week when we explore deeper into the exciting world of the Danger Noodles here on Snake Stalker. Were we close to civilization this entire time? Why am I walking? Could have called someone. Could have grabbed me. No need for me to do this. I blame you, Kevin.